Okay, good morning and welcome to the first lab session for the Writing Wikipedia Articles class. Uh, so Orange Abundance, looks like you may be the only student with us at least at the start. So I hope you have some questions or ideas to share with us so we can get going and hopefully some folks will jump in as we're, as we're moving along. Um, usually in the lab sessions when we don't have, we, we often don't have as many people and we have more discussion. So um, we usually have people set up their microphones uh, if, if, they're, if they have microphones and are comfortable talking. Uh, it's a lot easier than trying to do everything through text chat. So if you haven't, um, if you haven't run through the audio setup wizard yet, you might want to do that and make sure your microphone works. Um, do you have any uh, any specific questions, or have you um, have you been working on any edits that you want to share with us to get us started, Orange Abundance? And you can feel free to to type in if um, if that's easier too. No, well, sir. It might be just you and me for the moment. <laughs> How's your week going? I just heard a little bit of, I think someone's microphone just came on and went off, but I didn't hear anything. No. Yep. I don't know what's going on. I'm not even convinced this thing. I'm sorry, I can hear your voice, but I can't quite hear what you're saying. It's very muffled. Hello? Oh? Yes, hello. Our independence, we could almost hear you. It was just very, very, very faint. You should be able to run the tools audio wizard to check your sound level and make sure your voice is loud enough for us to hear it. So good morning, Rosemary and Trish. Good to see you guys. Um, we're just uh, we're just trying to help Orange Abundance get his microphone set up. Uh, but while that's going on, if you have anything you've been working on that you'd like to share, any questions, please get us started. I think I heard a female voice, actually, Peter. Can you hear me now better? Hello? I can, Hello? I can hear you, yes. It's just very, very quiet. I have put it, I have increased. The volume in my system, one moment, I'm not going to get down this one and the other one, speaker, the other okay, I need to take down the other one, and the other okay. Now I'm going to leave just the blackboard and the speakers, okay. I think it's, it's uh, you, can you hear me now? All right? Better now? Yes, that's better. Better, okay. So can somebody uh, point to an article that they've made some edits to or um, anything that they've done since the class? I can always start off by, uh, by just sort of continuing the, the class lecture, but it's always, I always prefer to do things in response to questions during the lab if possible. Hi, this is Rosemary. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. So I'm figuring out that microphone again. You, you can hear me, I guess. Yes, loud and clear. OK. Um, Trish and I have had a few email exchanges. We're working on a piece she did the last course. And I, I haven't done anything on Wikipedia yet. I just am getting to everything right now. So. But I can see a number of places that I think I can make some edits. So I'm glad she's here today, too, because we'll have um, probably 
things to talk about. I know she was concerned about um, getting some help with uploading images. So that may be further along than you want today, but that would be fine. I know that was an issue with her. I'm not sure what my issues are yet. Okay. Yes, I, I saw that question on the talk page, and that's, um, that's certainly something we can cover today. Yeah, I, I figured out how to upload it to the Commons, but I don't know how to insert it. Um. Okay. Um, so let's let's pull that up. And this is Trish talking now. Yes. Maybe yeah, that was me. Yeah. Right. Sorry. As we're getting started, just to announce our names so everybody knows. I recognize your voice by now, but <laughs> probably not everyone <laughs> on the call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is Trish. Okay, so I'm going to pull that up in the browser. And, and Pete, one of my general questions is, I keep thinking, I, I know there's ways to find help on Wikipedia for things, but when I do the search, I, I don't seem to find the help pages. So that's sort of a basic problem I have. <laughs> it's very basic. Okay. And it's uh, you're not the only one, so let's definitely look at that. Okay, so here's our set interactive simulations page. So for anyone uh, just joining us, this was so Trish took the class the last round and uh, was the main person building this article um, along with I think a couple of other students who worked with us, right? Right, Kathy DeSalle built the yeah. basic framework, and I did a lot of editing. Yeah, so this has really come a, a long way. Well, it's it started as nothing uh, before uh, before the last round of the course, and uh, Trish has really added a whole lot to it. So, um, so what we want to look at is uh, is adding an image and uh, finding help pages. So let's. Let's look at images first. Is it, so there's one that you managed to upload, but you don't know how to insert in the article. Uh, is Sorry, I uploaded two. Um, that okay. a company so let's, in Colorado they took the picture. So mm -hmm. so I uploaded them into the comments. Okay. And they uh, they have uh, appropriate licenses. They were already released under right. free licenses. Right, I am. Okay, so let's. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna sort of talk through how I'm gonna find those images up, upload that you uploaded. Um, instead of asking you to send me the addresses on them, I'm gonna pretend that I need to find them on my own because I think that might be a useful exercise for people to see. So actually, I'm realizing I'm in my own regular account, which has some unusual settings. So I just logged out, um, and that way the buttons will look more familiar. Uh, so I'm going to start off by clicking View History. And as hopefully everyone remembers, this is uh, how you see the revision history of the article. And I see your username uh, listed several times in the recent edits. And I'm going to click on the Contribs tab, which is going to show me your contributions. And actually, as I'm doing this, I'm realizing that there is a, there's a layer of complexity here that um, when images are uploaded, they go to Wikimedia Commons instead of Wikipedia, which is a connected site, but it won't, your uploads to Commons actually won't show up in this list. So this is something that I wouldn't really expect uh, most people to not to know at this stage of the course, I'm going to just type in commons.wikimedia.org into the address bar. So I'm going to basically the same screen on a related site. So this is well beyond where we are in the class, but hopefully this will make more sense as we go forward in the next couple of weeks. So here I see the two files that you uploaded. So I'm going to click on the first one so we get an idea of what we're looking at. Oh, nice. Let's go add some, add some uh, personality to the article, actual people. So we have a description. These are high school students using FET interactive simulations. Uh, and this is, this is very good that it clearly says the students and parents have signed waivers allowing the use of their pictures. Uh, because this, especially, uh, especially with children, 
is a, a major concern and a lot of people upload things that may be appropriately licensed, they may be freely available, but the um, covering that other issue of making sure that the models have consented is very important. Okay, good. So that's great. So I'm going to just, I'm going to select and copy the, um, the file name. Oh, I was copying way too much information, I think. Okay. Yeah, so this is, um, this is sort of a, a bit of magic about how <laughs> Wikipedia works. The way that these, the way that Commons supports Wikipedia and, uh, and other related sites, the Wikipedia is in different languages and Wikinews, Wikibooks, which we haven't really covered, but um, the various sites that are under the Wikimedia umbrella. The way that Commons works is that all of those other sites can um, pull in images and video from Commons just by putting the name of the file there. So the sites are kind of connected behind the scenes. You don't have to put the full address. No. Oh, okay. And so we'll see how that works in just a moment. So for now, I'm going to just copy that name, and I'm going to uh, go back and I guess. I'm going to just look, I'm just, just so I can see what your other image is. I'm going to pull this one up. Okay, so another one of people in a class. That's great. Um, so now I'm going to just keep going back until we get to the FAT article. And I will, I'm going to just, uh, I'm, I'm not going to make an actual edit, so I'm going to pick sort of a section kind of at random here. So I'm going to pick the organization section and click edit source. And at the top of the section, I'm going to click on the picture icon, and that's going to ask for the file name. So I'm going to paste in what I copied before, and I'll put in a caption that says And then there's some options here. I could set the size. I could set the alignment left or right. Um, let's not worry about those for the moment. I'll click Insert. And you see that put in this line of code just un under the organization heading. You know, it's so small on your screen, it's kind of hard to read. Oh, OK. OK. You know, one of the things I wish sometimes is that while you were editing, I could watch like Google Docs. But that's not possible in Wikipedia, right? Uh, to watch within the Wikipedia like, software itself, right? Like while you're yeah. while you're editing, there's no way for me in Wikipedia to be watching you like you can in Google. Yeah, there's not not like that. No, that's <clears throat> that's really why we use the screen sharing software. Um, okay, I'll just but, use WinSnap and capture it. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we do have archives of these, but you're right. Sometimes the resolution. If I, you should always point it out if the if the text is too small, because I can increase the the point size like I just did. I always but also, more. can I add though? Um, Pete also has kindly made a whole lot of, um, as you probably or may not have yet discovered, a number of screencast tutorials, which are embedded in the homework for each week. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. They usually are linked directly to whatever we're doing that week, though. OK. So very specific tasks. Not necessarily this one. <laughs> but uh, I, could, I could make one based on this one now. This is, uh, it's, it's always knowing what is on people's mind and what they're having trouble with is the main thing that helps me know what to put into a screencast like that. So hopefully you can read it now. I, I increased the. Right. Says. Yes, okay. thank you. So let's I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna click show preview so we see that what that looks like. And <clears throat> there you have it. Oh nice. So you didn't even have to tell it to justify or anything. Right. By default, uh, if it's a thumbnail, it will uh, which and, and generally it should be inserted as a thumbnail, um, it will be aligned right. But there was that option. Uh, when we when we used that tool where we could have chosen a line left or a center. I see. Thanks. Sure. And so just to uh, I'm going to I'm going to go back to uh, before. So I didn't save that edit. I'm going to let you uh, go ahead and do that. 
Um, I, just to look at the other option here, so this is this is actually going to be a little new to me as well. I'm going to click the instead of edit source, I'm going to click edit data, which is so this is the visual editor that I mentioned in the class, and this will allow us to. Um, I think because of my point size, that uh, I don't know how to get rid of this notification box. So this is the the new feature that allows you to edit without. Um, uh, more in the uh, right in the text, and so there's also an icon here that we could. I think this media button. Let us pull that up. Yeah. So this I think has. Um, I'm not sure how it knew which ones to pull up in preview. I think that it maybe just noticed the name of the article and automatically did a search on the article title. Because it pulled up exactly the two that we're interested in. So yeah, it's had a little bit of question like that. When I did that last night, those didn't pop up. So do you think just time had to happen? You know, I really don't know. Okay. Um, this is this this whole visual editor is a very new thing, and it's still it's still changing and being improved. And um, I think we'll be learning about it together in this round of the course. Because that's how I thought it would work. I thought, oh, I'll just use the visual editor. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. All right, thanks. So I think I think it's always worth trying. If you try with the visual editor and can't figure it out, it's worth trying uh, edit source instead and, and vice versa. So I'm going to cancel this. Hi, this is Rosemary. I, I just wanted to say that, and for Trish for not being able to see the screen, I don't know if this is what you see, but on the, on the Collaborate page, right below the top bar, there's a little square that says scale to fit. And if it's checked, it's small. The text is kind of small on the screen. And if you uncheck it, it gets larger. But then a little bit of stuff may fall off the side. But in case in the future you can't see what Pete's doing, at least that worked for me. Thank you, Rosemary. I'm actually Thanks. not sure where that button is that you're talking about. I didn't. There's the, the talk thing where you I guess I'm not seeing it because I'm driving. That, there's video and then it's just right next to it to the right of it's in the it's in the actual screen where you're working. It's below the places where you check um, there are a couple other icons to check, but it's not on the you know, it's at the it's at the top, right? Where on the side where it says participants, it'd be right to the right of that and above it just a little. OK, I think I'm not seeing it because I'm the one sharing my screen. That's what I thought might be the case. Hopefully other people are seeing that. Yeah. Well, thanks for pointing that out. So um, we've had a couple other people drop in. So welcome, Tech Prof Writer. And uh, let's see, I think that's maybe that's all since, uh, since I was back here. Um, I know Trish had another question about finding help pages, and I definitely want to get to that today. But why don't we see if anyone else has a question or something they want to bring us to, and then we could come back to that later. See a couple people typing, so I'm just going to wait for a moment. A little summary of the Tuesday class. Okay, so you want to um, want to kind of review what we covered in the class. I'm very happy to do that. Oh, okay, so let's uh, <clears throat> let me just go back and do uh, a little bit of uh, of class orientation again. Um, looks like a couple of you could use a review. So our home page for the class is, uh, as the, the, in the email, I sent, uh, I sent the full URL, the full address that you can bookmark. You can always get here from that. But when you're in Wikipedia and you're just browsing around, what you probably want to remember is you can always just type WP, short for Wikipedia, colon, and all caps, Wiki, S-O-O. -O. 
which is the shortcut that will always redirect to our home page. And uh, we'll, we'll cover how this kind of shortcut works uh, and why the, the name is like that uh, as we go along. But that's just a good, quick way that you can always get back to this page. Um, and then this page should, the first section should always be the current weeks. Uh, it, it should be this, this highlighted box that, is, that uh, has a link to the page about the current week. So this will give you, it'll also give you the link for connecting to Blackboard Collaborate. But then here, if I, if I click this page, that's the week one page. And that's where you're going to find the homework and a summary of what we've covered in class and links to that week's archive. So basically everything that's specific to this week. Um, so in the homework section, uh, we have um, a few things that you should do uh, to get, get a feel for editing Wikipedia and make sure that you're connected with the team. And if anyone's having any trouble with that, uh, we should definitely go over that today. And then we have a few things to read, which uh, I think especially we have a little bit more reading uh, in the early homework sessions, and I think this can really be very helpful uh, to get kind of a, an overview of the background of how Wikipedia got to be what it is and how things are organized. Uh, I think this is a, a good complement to what's covered in our classes. Um, as you can see, there are a number of different things listed here, and I know that not everyone is going to have the time to read all of the materials. Uh, so, you know, you should, you should judge for yourself what's the most interesting or what seems to, um, to fill the, you know, answer the questions that you have. Some are more technical, some are more historical, um, but hopefully the, the titles will give you a clue of what's the most relevant to what you're, uh, what you're working on. And feel free always to ask, too, if you want, um, if you want some further uh, suggestion of, of which of these you should focus on. And then watch this. This, is, this has uh, links to some of the instructional videos that Sarah was just mentioning. Uh, and then at the bottom of this screen and of most screens associated with our course is this, uh, what's called the navigation box. So this is the main uh, sort of overview of our entire class. So this box will always have a link that takes you back to our main course page if you just click on the course title. And uh, you can see here it's, it's at the bottom of this page as well. And then each week has a row. So there's a link here as well to the week one page. And there will be links to the week two, week three, et cetera, pages. And then as we generate archives of these Blackboard Collaborate sessions, those will be linked in here. So right now, there's only one link so far. If you click on Blackboard uh, on week one, that will take you to the Blackboard Collaborate archive of the class session. And then in about 24 hours, we'll have a link here for the Blackboard archive of the lab session, the, the session that we're in right now. And then at the bottom here, you have uh, a, con a link to the course discussion page, uh, a link to the Teams page where we signed up uh, where, people, where the students form Teams. Uh, there's a description of the final project, which will become more relevant in week three. So you don't need to worry about that yet. Uh, and then also uh, the student project list, which again is, is connected with the final project. So basically all the, all the links that you need to navigate around the course pages are in this handy little box. Uh, and then one last thing I'm going to point out at, up at the top, uh, actually the most, uh, the, probably the easiest way to get to the course talk page is generally going to be to click on the talk tab. And we have redirects set up from the different week pages and things like that that should all take you to this same place. So when you have a question between classes and you don't want to wait for a lab session to ask it, this is the place to ask it. Um, as we said in the class, uh, in the early stages especially, you should always feel free to send an email if you're more comfortable with that. But um, as, you, as you learn the ropes on Wikipedia, this is the better place to ask questions because all your classmates can see the questions, can see the answers. Um, sometimes we'll have students jump in and, and provide answers before Sarah or I can get to them. Uh, and this uh, you know, it's a much more vibrant way to uh, to learn together uh, because really we, we find that most most of the time, if someone has a question, there are other people in the class that do as well. So you can, if you scroll down, the most recent questions are always going to be at the bottom. And there are already, uh, I think, four or five questions here that uh, Trish and uh, one or two other students have asked. So if you haven't taken a look at this yet, you should.
and uh, and I think we'll cover a couple of these in the remaining time we have today. So, um, so I see there's a bit of chat going on. Who who has something for us to pick up on now? Oh, hi, Glenn. That's How many people have uh, joined us since um, since the beginning of the lab? Peter, do you want to rehash what we usually do in labs and see if anyone wants to do anything along those lines? Yeah. Um, so the the idea of the lab session uh, is is really there, there's no there's no set agenda for the lab sessions, unlike the classes. So uh, what we like to do here is take questions or have students share what they're working on. Um, sometimes you have a specific question. Sometimes you've just been working on an article and, uh, and can guide the other students and us, the instructors, through, um, through what we've worked on. So as we, when we started here, uh, Trish uh, pointed us to the article that she worked on mainly in the last session of the class and has been conti uh, continuing. Uh, in this round, and we looked at how to insert images into that article. So um, if there's anyone else who's uh, already taken a crack at the homework and has made a couple of edits, I can see, here, here let me, um, let's see, I'm going to log in under my demo account. I want to, um, I want to show you something. Give me just a sec. So we did have a question about the courses link on the talk page, and I'm not sure if that student is with us today, but I'm going to cover that in, a, uh, in just a sec. So if you enroll properly for the course, you should have this courses link at the top of your screen. And if you don't, we should work through it. So I'm going to click on that, and it's going to show a list of, of edits. And this is actually in a pretty different format than we've seen in the view history screen. But this will show the various edits that students in the class have made. So I can. Do, this is actually a new feature that we didn't have working uh, in the last round of the class. So I'm, I've been enjoying looking through this and seeing what people are working on. And I think we can use this as a jumping off point if, uh, if you guys don't have specific things you want to guide us to. Uh, I see there's a, a question here. Will the demo of how to insert an image be available as a recording? Um, so that will, yeah, that will always, uh, there will always be an archive of every class and lab session. So you'll be able to go back and watch any part of this that you missed. Uh, and I think I will, in addition to that, make, a, um, make an instructional video specifically on how to add an image. So T. Bird, we can see that you uh, are, have been the most active contributor recently. So that's good to see. Uh, I see that you've been poking at a couple of different articles here. And I'm just scrolling through, we've got, uh, we've got some activity here on the FET article that we looked at. That's great. So, Trish, you asked earlier about help pages. So let's take a look at that. Um, there are lots of ways to um, to find documentation within Wikipedia, and there's almost so much documentation that it can be confusing to navigate your way through it. So let's let's take a look at a couple of different ways to find help within Wikipedia. Uh, one place. Uh, probably, probably, if there's any one central place, it's probably going to be this, the community portal in the left-hand navigation. So this is a page that's designed with uh, the idea of helping people get oriented within Wikipedia. So you can see these icons up at the top of the page. The help desk is, uh, is a place where you can go specifically to ask questions. So 
within this course, of course, you can always ask questions on our discussion page, and that should probably be a first stop. But um, you know, if you find yourself like after the course is done, this would be a natural place to go to ask questions if you're not finding them within our course. Um, and then there are some kind of more. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to trying to think which ones of these I want to want to talk about right now. Um, so the village pump is kind of a similar concept, except that it's not so much oriented towards new contributors. It's a it's a place for general discussion about Wikipedia among experienced contributors, new contributors. If someone has a proposal for doing a major restructuring of uh, you know of how the help pages are organized or of uh, of how the software works or something like that, they might bring it up at the village pump. Um, I think the rest of these you can kind of click through. I think they're not really so relevant uh, at this point in the course. Uh, but then if you if you scroll down, you'll find some other interesting things on here. The signpost is a um, is a weekly newsletter about Wikipedia. So if you're kind of interested in what's going on currently, that's always an interesting place to look. Um, there'll be some some general notices here. And then also if you if you scroll down, I think it's near the bottom of the page. Yeah. So this section, help out. If you're looking for, if you do, just don't have any idea what articles to edit but you want to practice, this can be a good place to look where you can find articles that need help categorized. So if you want to work on spelling and grammar issues, it'll suggest some articles that need that kind of help. Um, if you want to add, you know, sort of practice your research skills and find references, these are some articles that need that. If you want to add an image, that's something actually that's something that people in this session might be interested in going <clears throat> and trying out now that you've seen how to add an image to an article. Uh, of course, sometimes you'll find the reason that these are listed for adding an image is because it's hard to come by an image of that topic. It might be that it's uh, you know of a remote place where you know no one's traveled there yet and taken a photo and uploaded it to Commons. So you might not always easily be able to uh, address the things that are in this. Section, but it's it's a good place to look around if you're looking for article status. Um, and I was I had thought there was going to be a link from here directly to the help. Oh, okay, here we are, right at the top. So new to Wikipedia, see the help page for everything you know. And I guess that's also in the that's the top link in this interaction menu. So this is going to be the same link. So if you want to track down an answer to a specific question, this is probably always going to be your, your best first stop. And there is a search box at the top here. Notice it's below the main search box for Wikipedia. Search only within Wikipedia's help pages. I can't read the rest of what it says in there. So let's say um, we wanted help uploading an image. So this gives us a bunch of links to uh, Wikipedia. So there's here's a picture tutorial. I think since it's called a tutorial, this is probably uh, the option that would be best suited to someone who's new to it. So this is probably your best one-stop uh, destination if you want to find answers. Um, there's another. Uh, I'm also going to show you the um, some options within the search box, which could be helpful too. So let's say we wanted to upload an image, and we tried entering it in here. Um, that's actually not a good example. I'm going to type in something that doesn't have an exact page. So I could because there's this bold. Uh, sort of auto-complete answer that came up. I know there's actually a page on upload images, and, I, and for most of the time, you're not going to find that there's actually a link that shows up here. So I'm just typing in something different so that it's not the exact title of the page. And I'll click Search. So it gives us a bunch of links, but these are typically going to be links to Wikipedia articles. And what we want here is not actually a Wikipedia article. We're interested in how to edit in a Wikipedia article. 
So this gets us to the concept of a namespace. And I'm going to click on the advanced tab up here because that's going to show us where this is searching. So Wikipedia as an encyclopedia, the article uh, the articles are, are, are really are the contents of the, Wiki, of, of the Wikipedia, um, of, of the encyclopedia itself. So by default, it's only going to search the articles. It's going to assume that what you're looking for is a Wikipedia article. But there are all these other spaces. So if we uncheck article and we check health, and let's say we could, we could check Wikipedia, um, some, some of these spaces, it's, it's pretty obvious what they're about, and some of them, it's not. So I'm not going to cover all of them now, but the help space is where all of the help pages are. The Wikipedia space is where everything that's about Wikipedia is, so policy pages, um, dispute resolution pages, uh, places where people are planning how to, um, you know, planning uh, local events or projects would be in the Wikipedia space. So these would be more relevant to someone who's trying to figure out how to use Wikipedia. For the moment, I'm going to uncheck Wikipedia and we'll just look at the help space. So we've still got our search term, upload an image. And this, I think, is going to show us a pretty similar result to what we saw a moment ago. Uh, we've got this help files, this help viewing media, uh, introduction to uploading images. So we've got several options here that are going to, um, going to show us how to upload an image. I'm going to click into one of them. Let's say files. And just to point out that what I was just saying about namespaces, so we're in the help namespace, and what that means in terms of when you're looking at a page is anything before a colon like this in the um, in the title. is So we're in the help namespace, and that's indicated by the beginning of the, the title of the page that we're on. Uh, and another example of that would be I'm going to click on my username, so this is going to take me to my user page. And now you see we're in the user namespace. So this is a, a, a space that's reserved for pages about users of Wikipedia. It's also in, in this in this first tab here, uh, when you're looking at a Wikipedia article, it says article. Uh, a moment ago in the help namespace, it said help page, and here it says user page. So Trish, does that help give you an idea how to find help? That's just what I needed. <laughs> I see Sarah says to Google for help. I didn't think of doing that. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, a, that's I'm just, a really I'm just, good point. I'm just a hack, but I, I do that all the time whenever I'm trying to figure out, you know, I'm not really, I'm not the experienced Wikipedian here. I have edited, you know, sort of, I'm a light Wikipedia editor, um, and I have been for many years, but I frequently do not know how to do something. And, and, and I, so, it helps to know that that's called the namespace. Somehow I lost that. Yeah, yeah. That is important. So I didn't know where to put it in my mind. And that's true of all of the, um, the media wiki installations. Any, anytime you see wikis like that look like this, that people are always talking about how things are stored in different namespaces. But I often just Google for help. I just stick the word Wikipedia into any search. Mm. And surprising how often what I'm looking for does come up in the first like three results, and usually you can tell that it's the right result because in the in the search results it'll say something like, "Peter, get help me get the language right." It'll say something like, "This is a Wikipedia guideline" or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, probably in like a banner at the top just, of the page. Yeah, so you, yeah, yeah, you can always tell that like what 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 space you're going into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really helpful. I spent a lot of time. Uh, reading all about the visual editor last night, <laughs> seeing if there was going to be some help in there. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, that was uh, deep. So this is this is actually kind of amusing. The uh, the first result I got here is this uploading images page, and it's got a banner that says this may be too technical <laughs> for most readers to understand. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, I'm going to watch when, your video. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, and, and remember when I did the search a moment ago, we had a number of different options. So you yeah. know, this is this is where the the wealth of documentation pages can actually be an advantage. So if you see a banner like that, okay, well maybe this isn't the best place for me to go in. So you go back to the search, and maybe the file upload wizard is a better option. 
So if so, you let's just say you made a video about it, would mm -hmm. that be something I could add to one of the articles? Um, how's the ownership of that yes. video? Yes. Okay. Um, so the the. Let's see, so the, the videos that we produce for this class, everything that we produce in relation to this class is freely licensed, uh, okay. meaning that it can be reused really for, for any purpose. Um, and Wikipedia help pages are just as much open to improvement and editing as the articles of Wikipedia. So okay. definitely. Uh, and that's, as you're looking at help pages, if you, if you, you know, let's say we looked at this page that says it's too technical. Well, maybe you take a crack at it anyway, and it might be a little bit, a little bit confusing. But as you're figuring it out, you might think of an easier way to phrase something. So you should very, you should feel very uh, empowered to go in and make that improvement. If it's, you know, someone's already identified that it may be too technical, uh, which is sort of an extra special invitation to make it easier to understand. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Just going back to Sarah's point about Google, I'm really glad you made that point. The um, the search engine of Wikipedia is it's it's very good at some things and it's really not so good at others. Uh, so it, it it really is. I I tend I guess once you have a pretty good sense of how Wikipedia is organized, uh, it's it's pretty easy to use the Wikipedia search engine to find things. But until you have that, Google is probably Always going to be the better, um, the better option. Um, it's something that I don't tend to think of because I am so immersed in the Wikipedia world. So thanks for bringing that up. <clears throat> My pleasure. So, who else has uh, uh, Tiber? Do you want to? Um, point us towards anything that you've worked on. I saw you made a few edits in the in the courses list. Orange abundance. I think you had uh, last we talked to you. You were trying to get your microphone set up, and then we didn't get too far. So I, I hope we haven't left you behind. Sorry. Okay. Can you hear now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah. I um I was invited to a meeting at of my my university. They were concerned about some um something that's that was being written in a certain article on Wikipedia about um a hot topic that's that's for our university and um <clears throat> and our marketing people didn't know anything about Wikipedia. So I went along to the meeting and um I knew knew enough to be able to show them where in the article um, the person who had written in stuff was basically making it up and um, didn't have any decent references. And um, so, you know, and then I could sh I, I could show them like on the rules of Wikipedia. Here's where they they have transgressed these rules. <laughs> and um, and so basically, um, what what they agreed to do, and I hope this was the right action. I was hoping to ask you guys. Um, so what you do in a situation like that is you you can rewrite it and put the correct. Um, you can you can delete false stuff and put in good stuff with correct um, uh, and good references, and ju just put in the in the comments. We deleted this because it was wrong. Uh, based mm -hmm. on it didn't have any. You know, you can't just reference a YouTube of your uh, YouTube video of yourself saying it. That's not good mm -hmm. enough, right? That's so fantastic. Right yeah. yeah. <laughs> can you um, can you point us towards that article? I think it would be really useful to other folks on the call to to kind of see okay. what that looks like. Okay. It hasn't it hasn't been fixed yet. Um, uh, So I just typed the name in it. I didn't. I, it's not the link. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing it. You put it in the. Sorry, I just oh, put Richard. it in the chat. Sorry. Richard, um, in the chat. And it's, sorry. To be to be exact, that's what it is. Exhumation. Okay. She typed Richard the Third exhumation. Yeah. Yep. Got it. 
Well, this sounds like a hot topic. <laughs> Very hot. <laughs> okay, so this one at the top, exhumation of Richard III of England. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so you, there's a section that didn't have good so references. The very first statement oh, um, in the is actually this whole thing was written by somebody in the states that we don't know, and mm -hmm. um, it's it's there's actually some correct things, but uh, the first two references are complete boulder dash. <laughs> okay. So okay, so there's we have a YouTube video. Yeah. And another YouTube video. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, so anyway, we were able to, you know, say, okay, look, they have those. What's being said there is just wrong. The references aren't mm -hmm. aren't strong enough. And mm -hmm. what we know, we have we have better references. We have actual um, mm -hmm. books and um, peer reviewed articles. So we can just go ahead and do that. Put in our good mm -hmm. references, and it should stick. Right? right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> one would hope. <laughs> so a couple of things that uh, that I might and you may have already done this, but just to to kind of uh, talk through a process. Yeah. Um, thanks. I I would suggest looking at the talk page because it yeah. could be that this has already been under discussion. Um, yeah. And it looks like there is plenty of discussion here. Yeah. So let's scroll down to the bottom and see what the most recent things are that people have been talking about. Uh, so this is so in May someone brought up something about new academic papers. That's that's useful. It looks like someone was just making a note of something that might be a useful reference. Yeah. Maybe it's related uh -huh. to what you're talking about. Maybe not. Yes. I don't know. Yes. Uh, but this is a good thing because it you know it indicates that there's there's someone who's interested in. Adding good references, so this Helen, yes. she may make a good sort of ally in improving the article. Yes, yes. Um, and then, you know, something about uh, something about the coffin here. So I, I'm, I'm just kind of going to take a glance at this. I don't, I really don't know the topic, but um, uh -huh. you know, this would be a good thing to kind of look at before you start making any major changes, because mm. you kind of want to know what what you're stepping into. If people are mm. already actively arguing about that topic, you want to know mm. that, and you want to join that discussion instead of you know, mm. uh, uh, sort of coming in uh, completely independent of it. Right, right. And another way to get a sense for that is the history tab. Now, here's a here's a little weird point. Um, if once we're looking at the talk page, if we click on View History Now, we're going to actually see the history, the edit history of the talk page, not of the article. Right. So, okay. So you want to go back to the article, and then click View History. Yep. And this will give you a sense, first of all, just of how frequently people are editing it. So I'd first look at the dates. Yeah, we were looking at this in the meeting. So it was okay. It was pretty interesting, Great. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Sounds like you've uh, you've had a good handle on this. Yeah. Okay. okay. So and then the, the last thing, and, and here's something where I think Trish, you might uh, you might want to jump in. I'm I'm gonna just pull up your I'm gonna go back to the set article. Um, for for an example, it, when when you have a connection to a subject, so it sounds to me like your university is um, you know is is pretty connected with this this issue. Yes, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. That's, so the, that's the other question I wanted to yeah. ask was you know, how do you what do you do with that? Right. So it's always a good idea to to basically clearly flag that connection on the talk page. So Fine. in this case. Trish, right as she began the article, or actually, yes. I guess Kathy, so Trish's colleague, left this this note at the beginning, and this I think is probably a good one to look at and use as a uh, as a basis. You know, you want to do it in your own language and uh, in a way that is appropriate to what you're working on. But this will basically give other if 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 other people editing the article start to develop a sense that you have a connection to the topic that you haven't clearly stated, it can sort of right. create a a, a sense of you know that you were kind of trying to pull a fast one and yes yes you want to you want to avoid anyone getting that impression right right okay so the, that's so so the talk page is the pl is the place to uh, to say that yeah kind of if declare a, your interest if it's a real, exactly if it's a yeah. really significant one if it's a so like I think in uh, in Kathy's case she 
works for, she is the director of the entity that, um, yes. you know, that the article's about. So she yes. also put it on her own user page. Yes. And so, you know, putting it in a couple of different places like that. Yes. That might not be necessary for something like this where it's more just that your university, you know, has a connection to the topic. Yes. So, Pete, this is Trish. So, um, uh, when you brought that up, I, I guess I didn't, you know, I knew that Kathy had done that about who began the article. And I just put on my talk page how I was related to that article. But you think um, I should go back maybe and uh, put something on the talk page that I did a significant amount of work and that I'm related to it? I thought I did that somewhere, but I know um, it's on my talk page. Yeah, so just looking at where you put it on here, on your, or maybe on your user page. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's on maybe. your user page. So do you think um, I should put it in the article, though, talk page? Um, I, you know, I think you could. I, I don't, I, I think as long as one of you did there, I think it's, you know, if someone's following along the discussion, it's pretty clear that you work together. I, if we were at the beginning of this process, I would say that was an important thing to do. Uh, at this stage, I would, I don't know, use your judgment. I don't, I don't think it's critical. Okay, because uh, I just if thought you, if they look me up, they'll see mm -hmm. who I am, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's always a little bit of a, there's, there's no really clearly established um, guideline of exactly how you should go about this. It, it, it's really, it's, it's really more of, um, you know, I think, I think, I, I can make suggestions, but there's no rule. <laughs> um, so it's, it's, it's mainly about just doing whatever you think is the appropriate thing to give people the information that they would want to have. You know, and I, I think more disclosure is better. Um, but it's, it's, it's always sort of a balancing act. Hmm. If you, if, if, if you find yourself, uh, you know, if you feel a little confused by that and not sure how to, how to proceed, I think you should go ahead and leave something. And that way you can rest assured that you've done everything you could to, um, to make it clear to other people what your connection is. Okay. Peter, we have a question about um, article translation in different languages. And uh, I think Orange, Orange Abundance uh -huh. has given up on her microphone. Okay. Um, so. If you want to... So I'm looking in the chat window now. Here, I'll just read this out loud. For example, if I, oh wait, for example, so is this following up on an earlier comment? No, okay. If I want to write a reference in Spanish that's already in English, what can I do to translate it or to create a new one in English and Spanish? Or maybe can be different, the English version and the Spanish one. Uh, for example, the description of a botanical plant now known in Spain but already defined or not known in Spain, but already defined in the USA. Okay, uh, great question. Um, back to botanical plants again, too. This is I know. Very and back to Spain. Classes. <laughs> yes. So uh, I don't think we've talked very much about the different language editions of Wikipedia. So that's a great uh, introduction, a great jumping off point for that. Uh, before, uh, so I'm going to I'm going to come at your question kind of slowly. Orange abundance. First, I'm going to uh, just look at. I'm going to look at a. I just clicked on biology for a, a major topic, which I know is going to be covered in most language editions of Wikipedia. So, whenever you're looking at an article like this, if you scroll down on the left-hand side, you will see a list of languages, and each one of these links to that language's article on this topic. So, if we scroll down, you can get a sense of how many versions of Wikipedia they are with a major topic like this. And, oh, here I'm looking under S, but I should be looking under E for Espanol. So here we go. There's a, a link that will take us to the article on biology in Spanish. And for a major topic like this, so, okay, uh, before I get to that, so notice now that we, suddenly the, the links at the top are in Spanish. The tabs are in Spanish. Everything about the site is in Spanish. So we're actually on a different website, a related website, but a different website. This is the Spanish version of Wikipedia, not the English version of Wikipedia. 
Um, and so this site has been built up by Spanish speakers. It's not, uh, it's not, a, it's not, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's not overall a Spanish translate, translation of the English version of Wikipedia. It is its own living, breathing Wikipedia community. Um, there are times when someone will take an article in English and translate it to Spanish or the other way around. Um, but that will really be a starting point for something that will then continue to evolve separately in those separate languages. A good example of this is actually the article on, um, on open educational resources. So I'm going to type it in, in English because I'm not remembering exactly the Spanish name. But uh, last, uh, in the last session of this course, one of our students chose to work on the article on OER in Spanish. And uh, he actually took the English language version and translated it. So you can see now, so you see there's, there are still a number of articles in other languages, but not as many as with a broad topic like biology. And if we click on Espanol, here we have the article on Recursos Educativos Abiertos. And if you look through, you'll find that it's very similar to the English language version, but it's not exactly the same. Some people use Wikipedia as an opportunity to practice their translation skills. So if you're learning another language and you want to practice translating between English and that language, you might choose to work on an article like this. Uh, and just do straight translation. Um, you will find that the if, if if the English language version is based on English references and has English footnotes throughout it, it might be fine to include those on uh, on the Spanish version. And you see here that uh, that's what has been done. There are some English language references throughout. But it also might be better in the long run to have Spanish language references. So one thing that you could do to improve an article that's been translated from English to Spanish is to actually look at uh, reference materials that are in Spanish and replace or add to the references in the article uh, to make it more useful to a Spanish speaker. So uh, if you I'm trying to think in a, in a really a, a practical sense, if you wanted to do a translation, just coming back to what Orin Dependence is, is asking. Um, okay, you've got, so when I search for some flower's name in Google, the English version is larger and more interesting. Okay, so, oh, thanks Trish. Good to see you. I see we're already at the end of our hour. So I'm gonna continue answering this question. Um, and actually, there were, just uh, <clears throat> as a reminder, there were a couple of questions that came up on the course talk page. I don't think that everyone who was asking questions there has been here in lab, so I didn't get to all of those. So be sure to check back on the talk page, and I'll be posting some answers there in, uh, in the next couple hours. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming, and I hope you can stick around a little bit. But if not, we will see you Tuesday. Um, <clears throat> so back. Back to the translation question. I'm going to. Thank you, guys. I'm going to pull up since you're asking about uh, botany. I'm going to pull up another article that one of our students, a couple of our students, worked on last time because they happened to work on an article about a flower. And I don't. I would imagine that this fits what you're talking about. We have a pretty extensive article in English now. Uh, and there is an article in Spanish. I'm going to guess that it's probably not as extensive. Oh, it actually, well, it actually is. It's like someone has already, oh, that's fascinating. It's actually longer. So um, not a great example, <laughs> but that's something I'll want to follow up with with our students, I think. Um, so let's, let's look at this in French. I don't see French listed here, so I'm going to just Type in FR, which is the language code for French. And so we see there, there is no article. So it, it gives us uh, a link here, this red link, uh, which is for create this article. So 
So if I were wanting to start this article, I would co I would copy the code out of the English language version, paste it in here, and then start translating it. Um, so that would be that would be one approach to to how to do something like this. Uh, you can always, of course, do that section by section. So maybe if there was a short article here and you wanted to build it out, uh, you might start with the English language version and just let's say the taxonomy section. I would I would go under edit source and select all in here, copy, and then go to the French version and paste, and then start translating sentence by sentence. Okay, glad that was helpful. And if you uh, Orange Abundance, I would really encourage you to um, to pick an article and uh, and work on that in the class. We'll be we'll be choosing a, a final project in week three, but you can always get started earlier if you know what article you want to work on. And feel free to ask more questions as we uh, as we go ahead. This is uh, the the translation issues can be a little bit more technical than um, than the things that we'll cover in the class sessions, but we're always happy to. Uh, to answer questions like this. Okay, so thanks everyone for coming. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording now and uh, everybody keep your eye on the discussion page. And I hope to see you there and hope to see you Tuesday. Bye-bye.